right, I thought I'd get one of these uh, stainless camp stoves to play with. Um, you can see them all over uh, all over Amazon and the and the internet. Um, they go by names of Ohu, uh, Canway, Gas One, Tom Shoe. Um, they make two different sizes. Um, this is a larger one. It's about eight inches wide by twelve inches tall. Um, they make a, a smaller version that's about I don't know about six inches wide and eight inches tall. Um, I thought I'd get the bigger one to play with. Um, see all that smoke? Um, most of these I've looked at and seen. Um, I build uh, I build smokeless fire pits for fun. And one thing that's taught me is uh, airflow is is absolutely critical to good, clean combustion, controllable combustion. Um, and one thing I've seen with these stoves is they all have a design flaw. Um, before you go off on me about, oh, okay, you're not packing it right. You're not you're not loading it with fuel right. You got to pack it full of fuel and start the fire from the top down. You're absolutely correct. Um, when you pack them full of fuel, they do burn better because of the design flaw. Um, these stoves have too much primary air. When you get too much primary air, um, you get too much wood gas released and too much upflow through the stove. Um, when you release too much wood gas, it doesn't have enough time for the secondary air to burn it down. You can see I've got some secondary flames going on there, but because it has so much primary air, it releases so much wood gas, um, you get these dark orange sooty flames and smoke. Um, and that's uh, you know not a real good way to burn. They just roar through fuel like that. Um, they're, uh, I mean, they seem to be a pretty good value for your money. They're, you can find them anywhere for under $25. I think this bigger one was $26. Bucks, so. um, but I'm going to show you a way to make them burn a whole lot better um, without having to pack them full of fuel, without, uh, without having to make any permanent changes to them, period. So uh, more on that in a minute. Okay, when you look inside one of uh, these stoves, um, you're probably going to find a whole lot of holes in the bottom that basically just go all the way through to whatever you have the stove sitting over. Um, that, uh, that burn pot there is six inches in diameter, which means it has a little over 28 square inches of surface area. Uh, those 31 holes there, based on their size, total up to about 5.35 square inches of surface area. Uh, or about 19% of the bottom surface area of, of the burn chamber. What I've discovered in uh, building my smokeless fire pits is that um, I typically want 1% or less uh, of primary air feeding the fire. Um, you start running more than that and you just have too much upflow through the stove. It just carries the wood gas away before the secondary air can, uh, can break it down and ignite it. Another issue with the way these are, though, is if you have a ton of primary airflow coming up underneath the fire, well, all of your air, both primary and secondary, comes in through all these holes around the base. So if you've got a ton of it coming up through the center and it's roaring like a rocket stove, the air is going to take that path more easily than it can take the path up between the sidewalls and through all those secondary holes. Um, ideally, you want to give just enough primary air to sustain a good coal base for the fire to release wood gas. You want your secondary fire to provide almost all of your combustion. Um, that gives you the cleanest burn and the most efficient burn. Um, another flaw well, with the stove is that when you've got those holes, it just go down to whatever you're setting the stove over. So. Uh, any embers that get small enough to go through a hole, go through a hole and land on whatever's underneath it. So I can't just set this thing anywhere. For instance, I've got to put it in this metal pan. Um, otherwise, it'd be dropping dropping coals through under the table. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a small stainless dish. Um, I picked up a parts tray, a magnetic parts tray from Harbor Freight, you know, for four bucks, and took the magnet off of it. It's just glued on. And I'm going to affix that underneath this burn pot. 
it's just slightly smaller in diameter than the, than the burn pot is. And I'm going to uh, affix it with bolts up through a couple of these holes and spacers to leave just a really thin gap around the edge and get down closer to that 1%. Um, I don't know exactly where this stove's sweet spot will be yet. I've never played with one this size, um, but I'll start with 1%. Um, and that little pan underneath will serve for two purposes. It'll allow the air to uh, spread out evenly and come up through all the holes under the fire evenly, still feed the fire well, um, and it will also throttle it uh, through the narrow gap around the edge, but it'll also catch all the ashes that'll fall through it. So um, let me get that uh, let me get that fabbed up the rest of the way, and I'll show you another burn with that running in place. So here's what I've done to the burn chamber. Um, there's some screws and nuts and washers just sitting in the existing holes. I didn't modify it at all. And I took this uh, stainless parts tray, took the magnet off of it, and drilled some holes in it to match where the hardware goes. And there's some screws, or some nuts holding it up there on the screws. Basically, uh, it's pretty much snugged up against the bottom of the burn chamber. And I'll show you what a burn looks like with uh, no primary air. Basically, this is cutting off all of the primary air. Um, but what this allows me to do, besides forming a, uh, an ash pan underneath the burn chamber, um, it allows me to fine tune the primary air by controlling the size of this gap. Okay, this is what happens when you shut off all of the primary air. Um, if you look closely, you'll see that it's actually pulling the flames down into it. That's the, the fire trying to draw in air down, either from the secondary holes or from outside of the stove. Um, you can see i got some secondaries popping up in there, but they're not very stable. They come and they go because the, uh, the fire trying to draw air down past those disrupts their flow. Um, you notice the blue flame. Blue flame's good. Blue flame means you're getting it hot enough to um, separate the hydrogen from the carbon. But what I need to do is I need to add just enough primary air to have it almost stop sucking the flames down. So we'll show some more of that later. Okay, this is with about 1 16th of an inch gap between the ash pan that I've added and the bottom of the burn chamber all the way around. That works out to be about 1.1 square inches of surface area, um, or about 4% of the, uh, the 28 square inches of surface area at the bottom of the burn chamber. Um, this will occasionally get down really low, and what you'll have is uh, it'll still be pulling down a lot of air from the top. You can still see it there, the flames are being sucked down every now and then. Um, and that'll destabilize the secondary flame. But this is looking much better. It's got, uh, for the most part, um, you can't really see any primary flame down in there. Um, and it's pretty much just all burning on secondary flame. Um, but it's burning very cleanly. No smoke to speak of. And it's not roaring through fuel. So um, I think I need to add just a hair more primary air to get... Uh, to get to what I would call the sweet spot. Okay, this might be a little too much primary air. Um, I think this is about 3 30 seconds of an inch. I'll have to measure it, but um, I can see primary flame, a bunch of primary flame down in there, and all of the secondary flame is going up. Wind picked up here a little bit this evening, but um, I would say this is just a little bit too much primary air. Um, I'll have to do the math on it, figure out what it is. Okay, uh, I think I've got a pretty decent burn going here now. Um, the screws I used to hang the ash pan underneath the burn chamber were 32 threads per inch. So each full turn of a nut um, equals 1 32nd of an inch. Um, I showed you a burn with uh, them tightened all the way down and no primary air. It just doesn't work. It eventually goes out and just sits there and smokes. Um, because it, it doesn't have quite enough to sustain enough heat to release the wood gas. Um, I went up to about a sixteenth of an inch and that was pretty good, but it looked like it needed a little more primary air. It would it would occasionally burn down and almost go out. Uh, I went to three thirty seconds of an inch. Um, that's about six percent of the bottom area. A uh, sixteenth of an inch was about four percent of the bottom area. Uh, if you remember, the 
the holes unrestricted equal um, over 19%. So 6% um, was, to me, just a little bit too much air. Uh, so I went back a half a turn on the, uh, on the nuts to tighten up the gap just a little bit. And this is the kind of burn I get now. Um, this is a lot more similar to what you get if you packed it full of fuel and did a top-down burn. But um, I didn't do that. Um, it's just, I'm just throwing fuel in and just letting it burn down as it goes. Um, the, the flames don't roar up out of it too bad. Um, I've got great secondary combustion, just a little bit of primary combustion. You can see the bright coals down in there. So it's uh, releasing, releasing heat and wood gas um, nicely. And then it has enough time for the secondary air to ignite it and burn it completely. So it's giving me a very clean burn and it's not roaring through fuel. Um, another way you can control the amount of gas you produce is by the size of the fuel you use. Um, you see I've got some various sizes here, but about the size of my little finger is a good size. They're easy to break apart. Um, that seems to be a good burn size for this. The, um, the smaller the fuel, if you fill up the same amount volume in the stove, um, the smaller the fuel, the more surface area it has, so the quicker it will, it will release wood gas. And that can cause you problems, give you too much fuel or too much flame. So um, I like to, I'll, I'll break up a bunch of little ones at first, and I'll throw a bunch of little ones in and I'll get my fire going with, with those because they burn really fast and really hot. And they warm the stove up, get the secondary air heated up quickly. But as soon as I get the fire going, then I start feeding larger sticks into it. And uh, it, uh, it consumes those really well. They burn a good long time. I can keep a good stable uh, heat output here with a very clean burn. So, um, I encourage you to try this. You can get stainless steel dishes um, all over the internet and all over Amazon. Um, you can just measure the size of your burn pot and, and find one that will fit uh, underneath it. And you just need some, uh, some stainless screws and nuts and maybe some washers. Um, to do this modification and and uh, then you can experiment with it like this and I encourage everybody to do that I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised Because um, now it burns This is the type of burn you get when you do a top-down burn and you, when you pack it all the way full of fuel and light it from the top um, But now you have control over it. So and you're not necessarily using um, a ton of fuel to do it So you can just kind of leisurely just throw it a stick every now and then and keep this nice steady output anyway um, I hope uh, you found this informative